Generative Bionics has unveiled Gene.01, a bold humanoid robot with physical AI. The robot signals a future where intelligence is embedded not just in software, but throughout a robot's entire body. What does this mean exactly? Let's dive in. Gene.01 is designed with full body tactile skin. The skin is formed by a distributed network of touch and force sensors that cover the robot from head to toe. Unlike conventional robots, where touch is treated mainly as a safety fallback, this robot elevates touch to a primary sense. The robot can feel taps, pressure, pushes, and collisions in real time, allowing it to interpret physical interactions and respond naturally when working alongside humans. So rather than funneling all sensor data to a single central processor, like the robot's brain, computation happens closer to the sensor themselves. All of these impressive features make Gene.01 a more sensitive robot. And while Gene.01 debuted as a concept, Generative Bionics plans to roll out multiple variants throughout 2026. These robots are being geared up for work in industrial factories and warehouses. Generative Bionics is envisioning a future where robots don't just see the world, but truly feel it. And of course, every great design depends on reliable parts, so let's take a look at one in our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. Harding 2000 Ethernet switches are unmanaged fast Ethernet switches designed for cost-efficient expansion or modification of network infrastructures. Supporting up to eight fast Ethernet ports, they feature an ultra-flat housing ideal for space-constrained installations, especially at the cable connection. The lineup includes flexible configurations with RJ45 and fiber optic ports. Built with non-blocking IEEE 802.3 architecture, the switches operate on 24 to 48 volts DC power. Plug-and-play operation is supported by automatic configuration features, making setup quick and easy. The Harding 2000 Ethernet switches are available in both commercial and industrial temperature ranges. Check them out today by visiting mauser.com or by clicking the link below. Why are industrial grade switches particularly helpful? To answer that, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. There's these devices called network switches, and we've probably seen them anytime you're dealing with an industrial network or even a residential or commercial network. These kind of devices are found all over, and their whole purpose is to be able to distribute a network like Ethernet between a whole bunch of computers, or in the case of industry, other devices, like a VFD, an HMI, a PLC, and a computer server. But there's a few things that set these devices apart between the ones that we can use in industry and the ones that we're unlikely to find in industry. While the internal workings of them may be very closely related, on the outside we see on an industrial switch a 24 volt power supply. Whereas on a more commercial or residential one, we find the barrel type of connector, which is usually around 9 to 12 volts. We also find the connection for a DIN rail mount that metal rail that goes in the back of a control cabinet so that we can place it alongside all of the other devices. The standard switches don't have any sort of connection except to be able to mount them on a wall or sit next to or nearby the equipment. Sometimes, when we can find these switches fully sealed in an IP67 rated enclosure so that they can be mounted right on the machine and be subject to spray and wash down, although not all industrial devices have that kind of protection. While the internals may be the same, we do have to be careful that the devices that we've chosen have the right voltages, mounting styles, and ratings to be able to be installed in the areas that we need. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. All right, let's jump into our Smart Bit quiz, the chance for you to determine if you're a Smart Bite or Smart Bit by answering three control automation questions. The questions are scored by using actuator output percentage, and today we'll be testing your knowledge on smart home gadgets. Let's begin with our first question for 25%. Kiku is driving home when she sees a tremendous light display. She wonders about its AI assistance. Which of the following statements about AI assistance in smart homes is most accurate? Is it A, 
They process all voice commands locally without connecting to the cloud. Or B. They use cloud processing to interpret natural language and learn over time. And the answer is B. Use cloud processing to interpret natural language and learn over time. Most AI assistants send voice data to the cloud for processing and learning. Local processing handles only wake word detection, while the cloud enables updates and context-aware responses. Okay, let's move on to our next question worth 25%. Kiku is excited to get home to her own light display. In automated lighting systems, what is the primary advantage of using Zigbee or Z-Wave protocols instead of standard Wi-Fi? Is it A, they allow lights to run independently of power supply, or B, they provide low power mesh networking that improves reliability and scalability? And the answer is B provides low power mesh networking that improves reliability and scalability. Zigbee and Z-Wave use low power mesh networks, letting devices communicate over longer distances, reduce Wi-Fi congestion, and improve reliability in smart homes. Okay, let's move on to our last question worth 50%. It's Friday night, pizza night. Kiku checks to see if her smart oven is on because she knows it often uses predictive algorithms. Which is a true example of this functionality? Is it A, the appliance randomly cycles through settings to test efficiency, or B, the appliance learns user habits to optimize schedules? The answer is B. The appliance learns user habits to optimize schedules. Predictive algorithms in smart appliances learn user habits to optimize performance, save energy, and improve convenience. Well, how did you do? You can have another go at it right now by clicking the link on your screen, and be sure to check out our other AE videos for the latest in control automation.